y'all. Welcome to the Champagne Wives Podcast. I'm your host, Kelly. And I'm your co-host, Nicole. Hey, Kel. Hi, boo. You're so far away. I know, so far away. And, and for a good reason, for a very though. good reason. Today, we have a very, very, very special guest, Tamara Jones. Hi, Hi. Tamara. Hello. Hello. Well, Sorry, we, you, we can't give you a round of applause. Yeah. yeah, but we'll do it ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome Thank to you. the Champagne Wives Podcast. We're nice so for, thrilled that you're here. It's nice to so meet you. Thank you for the invitation. Here. So we met in a very conventional but unconventional way right. uh, at the hair salon. Yes. And so this hairstylist, like literally, she's booked, like forever <laughs> booked. And so I had to literally get on her wait list to get an appointment. And I just so happened to get an appointment. And while I was there, I met her. Because her salon is like a real salon. Like mm -hmm. I feel like people go there and they actually speak mm -hmm. and talk. And you talk about like... Life. What's on TV, life, oh, right, yeah. you know what I mean? Like how just, it used to be. You really just yeah. chop it up, you right. know, like talk shit. And so <laughs> yeah. that's how I met um, Tamara. Mm -hmm. And we talked about something out, out of this world. It was, it was a sexual topic. Okay. And we were talking about just oh, like right. different kinks. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, what do you do? <laughs> and she was like, I'm a sex therapist. I was like, you have to come on the show. Right. You have to come on the show. Yeah. So we're so glad that you're here. I'm glad to be here. And just a shout out. But this is not the work of my artist. It's so, <laughs> so it's I, all good. I, I'm scared to be there this week. So let me not <laughs> represent Look, her like this. No judgment. I'm in between Right. When all else too. fails, yeah. we just rock a ponytail. Mm -hmm. right. Right. The good news is we have the texture to do that. Yeah, right. <laughs> God bless. So um, just a little bit about Tamara. Tamara is a licensed professional counselor and sex therapist. Mm -hmm. She specializes in couples counseling and works with individuals and families struggling with relationship issues, depression, and trauma. Um, she helps individuals and couples identify emotional triggers that may hinder their ability to relate to others and helps reduce or eliminate them so they can have healthy relation the healthy the healthy relationships they desire. She also helps people heal from traumatic relationships. And I have that highlighted because <laughs> we talk a lot about traumatic relationships yeah. on this podcast. Where were you in season yeah. one? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you know, we and our listeners have questions. Mm -hmm. okay. We have a lot of questions because, you know, over the course of the three seasons, we've just done a myriad of topics um, that were relationship based. We've talked about a number of different things on, you know, from Bad guys versus good guys. Uh, what the fuck is a high value woman? Low the keys to marrying well. <laughs> Having mental, just mental health and mental wellness. And yeah. we've talked about, you know, vacations. Would you rather do a vacation, a couple's trip or a girl's trip? So, I mean, we cover all the all topics. All the topics. All the time. And what we find is that our audience, our base, they like the relationship relationships. Yeah. Yes, they yeah. like that's the stuff that everybody desires. Yes. Right? And yes. So even though you'll get this, this defense, oh, I don't need a man, but you, you secretly want it. But oh. that's a defense. I, oh, that you oh, 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 that's a question. Oh, oh, okay, that's a question. Oh, 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 that's a bottle. So speak, bottle. Speaking of struggles, this right. bottle is giving me the business right <laughs> now. It? I can. It's one of these bottles again that oh. the cork is just. I don't have nails. Oh. So I could probably help you out. I want to use my teeth, maybe the jacket, but. um let me work on this. But I think, uh, you know, when we go back to season one, season one, when we started, we were talking about things like HBCUs versus PWI. Yeah. Kelly went to an HBCU. I went to a PWI. And how did that form, you know, our, our experiences to, you know, where we are today and the, which one? And the division as well. And the division. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Do tell. What do you mean by the division? Because <laughs> sometimes it's the divider is like, okay, you're not black enough if you didn't have this experience, or you know, you felt like you're running away from experiences if you went to a PWI. And I was right. like, why can't we just all be educated? Oh, that part. Oh, that yeah. would have been a that would have that would that, that, that topic. No, we did not talk about the divide, but you're absolutely right. This there is there is, there is definitely a divide, especially I think it's gotten a lot better now because even when I look at like my alma mater, which is Southern University and like LSU. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot, like back in the day, like they did absolutely nothing together. It was separate. Yes. You know, the black people then went to LSU, probably thought they were better than the people at Southern. Right. But now mm -hmm. it's just all one. Like they come on our campus, we go on their campus. It's right. just such a mixture of the two schools. Right. So right. yeah, it's had a lot better. Wasn't my experience. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I went to a PWI in the Northeast and 
very diverse. Don't get mm-hmm. me wrong. Very right. diverse. We were right, right outside of New York City. So we had the fortune of having a lot of diversity in our student body, but um, definitely didn't have that HBCU experience that you described. So yeah, season one, we was very much about like introducing ourselves. Our um, careers. We talked our, a lot about HR. Right. We talked about our kids. HR. <laughs> yeah. So it was very, very balanced, well-rounded. Season mm-hmm. two, we started to peel the layers of the onion back a little bit okay. and talked a little bit more. There we right. Thank you. Wow. There is a God. I was worried. I was like, is this just about bi- to be right. was, the it's, podcast? Right. This, this is the no podcast. Champagne. This cannot be the podcast where we don't have champagne. <laughs> right. Thank you okay. so much. And just making sure we can pour three glasses, right? Yes. Okay. Just have to double check. Um, and then season two, we started to shed um, a little bit of, we peeled the layers of the onion back. I guess shed's not the right word. Um, and probably went into more about who we were and what our preferences were, right, in terms of relationships. Um, and then season three, the train's just off the track, child. I mean, we <laughs> the just, train is all the way off. Like, we derailed, derailed. The derailed. The track, right. We have been <laughs> viral. We have been pissing people off left and right we with have. these topics around relationships. Around relationships. Yeah. And if, it's, if the men folk are not mad, then the women the folk, women are, not folk mad. are mad. You, just, and you are can't mad. make anybody like, happy. You just you can. cannot make you them know, happy. But you can't live in that space of making people mad. You got to be able to pour it with the truth. Yes. yes. You know, so truth, truth hurts sometimes. It does. That part. It does. And Speaking, Speaking of, of the truth, truth <laughs> we started our conversation with season three um, with what the fuck is a high value woman? Because there's a lot of narrative out there yes. on high value women and high value men. Um, the late Kevin Samuels, uh, we know, kind of led the charge let there. Let, let him rest, rest in is. peace. <laughs> Hopefully let, peace. Let, 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 let him rest where he is. <laughs> Get um, let him rest. Yeah. So we we wanted to kind of just dive into that topic a little bit because it was very much, I think he was a couple of months on the other side of life, um, but very much still in the, in the worldwide webs. Um, and so wanted to talk about that this season, but curious what your perspective is around like the categorization of high value man versus high value woman. Are we, are we adding um, or are we taking away when you think about like how we should be considering couples? Like, is that whole concept of high value limiting in your mind or is it a useful concept for folks who are looking to get in a relationship? I think we have to, you know, understand when we get into labeling and categorizing Mm -hmm. it's very restricting. Right. And so it gets to the point where the divisiveness, again, Mm. pits one against each other. Like you could just talk about your specific experience in a specific relationship and talk about that. Um, But when you get to the labeling, it puts people on the defense. Mm -hmm. And when they're on the defense, nobody's listening. Mm -hmm. And everybody's just choosing a side. And it's like we're not able to, you know, get anywhere. True. That's the key to communicating 101. True. Cheers. 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 Cheers, babe. Cheers. <laughs> so you understood the assignment. Take mm-hmm. a sip. You say yeah. cheers and yeah. take a I sip. Know. I just get lost in the conversation. Right. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So I agree. And I didn't think about it from that perspective, but mm-hmm. that's true. And, and that's why I think that all of, you know, the comments, the negative comments towards like even what he was saying, what we said on our podcast mm-hmm. um, happened because to your point, when you do start to label you start to, uh, people start to get defensive. Yeah. And I don't think that we were necessarily talking about why a man is not high value, right. but we were talking about what would, what would make a woman high value. And right. I think people were even Still upset, upset with it. that. They upset were, about yeah. that. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? And mm. it's just like, we weren't labeling them. We were just talking about our opinion on right. what makes us, but men still got upset about that. Yeah. And even within that context, it was us actually highlighting the fact that women are retaking the concept of high value um, and they're they're making it their own and not allowing the labels that men have assigned been pu- to you. have signed. That's a perfect yeah. word, have assigned to what a high value woman is. And so it was really actually lifting the women up, um, but it ended up going left. Going left. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it did. Yeah. It yeah. did. It does because you buy into the concept like because someone said it, this is the truth. Mm-hmm. You know, because people go into overgeneralizations, right? Because this has been my experience with one, two, three or four different women or four different men. This is 
the ever ending experience with everybody it is without taking that sense of accountability. You know, it's like if I keep encountering the same thing in all these different relationships, what am I doing to contribute the common denominator to this problem? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So ignoring the fact of what you're doing and just blaming everybody else, that's part of the problem. And I think that's what happens when you start labeling, mm -hmm. you know, there's no accountability piece there. So it's like if you start showing up and figuring out, okay, what can I do to get something different? Mm -hmm. That means you're moving forward. But if I'm just going to blame you all day, how do we come together? Because at the end of the day, we want to be together. Right, right. right. But we keep putting out these narratives that just keeps pushing us apart. And do you think it has a lot to do with ego, too, maybe? And I think even with, you know, your profession, right, in some of the situations that you've seen with the couples that you've counsel counseled in, you know, I think ego plays a lot into it about how a person feels about themselves and what they're willing and not willing to offer to their partners based based on that, right? And that so comes apart into it also like uh, the pain that people have experienced, mm -hmm. right? Because if you've had some nice relationships, you're not coming out bitter, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but because there has been pain and you didn't take the time to really work through that and heal from that. You're just jumping into another relationship, the same scenario going yeah. on. You know, you just keep perpetuating the same problem. So can we talk about that? Can we talk about that? Okay, go ahead. Can we talk about that? So what is the, what, what would you say is the appropriate amount of time that someone should take to heal? Is it, is, is, is it prescriptive or really does it vary from person to person? It, it varies from yeah. person, you know, and it's just to the point where you're not triggered by everything. You like you have to really identify what your triggers are mm -hmm. and be able to work through those because everybody you should not expect everybody to go around tiptoeing mm -hmm. around everything about you so that you don't blow up. Like right. mm -hmm. that's not everybody's responsibility. That's I a cannot this whole walking thing. on eggshells in a relationship thing like I, that to me is just like. Make pure no misery. Sense. That's traumatic. Yes. It's traumatic. Yeah, it's like, where's it's the level of, like, you miserable. can't be vulnerable. Yeah. You can't be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You can't be yourself because you feel like yeah. you got to be on all the time mm -hmm. to not hurt that person's feelings. And then people come up with all of these rules, right? And so the rules, you think it's like, okay, that gives us person a sense of control. I have all these rules. And if you do these, I'm not, I'm going to be protected from being hurt. Mm -hmm. Doesn't protect you from being hurt if it's a miserable for the other partner, and then they choose to leave anyway. Right. So mm -hmm. then you recognize you didn't have the control that you thought you did anyway. Right. Yeah. You know, it has to be something that's mutually uh, enjoyable, you know, by mm -hmm. both partners. Mm -hmm. You know, but, but I think sometimes, like, fear makes you hold mm -hmm. on to stuff so much, and it's like you just lose sight of reality and just mm -hmm. lose sight of what's important for both people. Yes. You know, when it's all about, well, I need this to happen for me, for me, for me, for me, right. without figuring out what can I do to help, you know, please you. Mm -hmm. Then it's like, yes. what, what are you doing? Right. Back to that ego that I, was, that I, was, that I mentioned. Well, and it's ago. interesting that you say that because I think about some of the reels that we've posted, right, where we've talked and we're going to kind of jump around on topics here. Um, but one of the, the most recent episodes we did was really an episode around submission. Okay. Um, and we, we listed some of the I'd say emotional and environmental circumstances that typically need to be in place in order for a woman to feel like she can safe. submit and right. safe to come to submit to her partner. And um, when we posted it, YouTube, the men hated it. They're like, oh my gosh, of the course they had a problem with submission. The men had a problem. That's the irony of it all, child. <laughs> yeah. Because <clears throat> they were just like, look, she's listing all of these things that need to be in place, but what is she willing to do? And it's like, well, wait, like if these things are in place, what she is willing to do is limitless. Lead, lead, lead you know, follow right. your lead. <laughs> follow your lead without issue. And, and I think it's, there's a little bit of, you know, patriarchy that's, that's going on there and disc and misogyny. And, and we talked about it on the episode. I think somebody has to be able to be willing to step up and right. take the lead, preferably the man. The man. Mm -hmm. A lot of times the women do it. And, and that's a whole nother topic of discussion. The plight of the alpha female. The, exactly. Yeah. The plight of the alpha, right. the alpha yeah. female, yeah. which hardly ever works. Mm -hmm. But I think that in a relationship, someone has to be, be the, the one to step up. Yeah. To be comfortable yeah. with the lead, you know, but I think oftentimes like the woman, when it comes to dominating the relationship is because they are sometimes often very successful in their careers mm -hmm. and they know the approach that they had to do to achieve these goals, to be dominant in their career life. And they think that they could transfer those skills into the relationship. It's the same fact. And that's not the same. You know, no one wants to be dictated to what they right. need to do mm -hmm. in a relationship. Right. It's like you, you have to come appear in your relationship with the softness. Mm -hmm. 
you know, so that a man wants to do for you. Right. But mm. if you come in, I got it all together. What is the room for him to be able to come show up Ooh, in the relationship? I just saw a TikTok right. on this. I just saw a whole TikTok oh, wait, on this. That's, that, but that's a good point. So she has to make the, make the conscientious decision to come in softer, or he has to make the decision to create a, a quote unquote soft life for her. Well, it's mutual, right? right? It's, it's, mutual. Mutual. it's okay. mutual because if you're with his hard exterior, well, why is he trying to freak you fragilely? Right. If mm. you got it all together, it's yeah. like he's going to operate like he's operating with the fellas. So um, okay. what I understand is well, that a man actually does have a need to want to provide, to provide, protect, protect fix where the case may be. Right. So if an alpha woman comes in, not necessarily, and correct me where I'm misspeaking here, but if an alpha woman comes in not needing anything, the man then questions, well, what what is she, my purpose what's here? my purpose yeah. here? Um, and where I would always challenge the male is don't always assume that the alpha woman who's coming in has her shit together because more often than not, and we've talked about this, the alpha woman has every desire to want to be cared be, for. Be cared for. She has to do what she has to do in that corporate world. But when she's home, she wants to more often than not lean into that more of that domestic lifestyle, that softer life where she can be the nurturer, the provider, doesn't have to be the one making the decisions. But I think a lot, my observation is that a lot of men, especially in the conversations we've been having in the, the last six or seven months around this, men don't even take the time to kind of acknowledge that and they just say well she's got everything she's bringing the table what does she need me for on to the next one let me find this other dough mm-hmm. that like needs a little bit <laughs> yeah. more it's a little bit but, easier but are you, again, do you see that or but, no but again i think it's mutually you know mm-hmm. responsible two people yeah. are responsible for that dynamic mm-hmm. if you have to show up you want someone to care for you but you can't come in there calling all the shots for everything right because you're not welcoming that leadership that you actually want yeah you know oftentimes that behavior it comes from, okay, I've been hurt before, I've been mistreated before, I've been abused before, and nobody's going to mistreat me. Mm-hmm. And so you go really hard in the paint for mm-hmm. what it is that you want to do. Right. And oftentimes that's avoidance behavior, right? Mm-hmm. Because Ooh, attachment, attachment styles. styles. Yeah. So, yeah. so, do it that, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that avoidance behavior because you don't have time to deal with all the trauma that's falling apart that you don't have any control over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like, okay, I'm going to focus on this. Right. And then just showing up is like, okay, you don't want to keep operating in that capacity, but you don't know how to turn that switch off because right. you're still in that fear-based space or that anxious attachment like you're talking about. It's like, okay, well, I want you so bad, but I have all these rules again, you know, but it doesn't work like that. You can't have rules for people. People have to show up and have them, you know, have negotiate a contract that works for both of us. Because mm-hmm. a lot of times we're looking at words um, thinking that we all share the same definition or the concept of yes. certain words. And if you don't define what that means for both of you, then you're just constantly, you know, yeah. have this friction going mm-hmm. on and you can't get on the same page. Right. You said tomato, you know? I said tomato. And so yeah. it's mm-hmm. just a matter of coming to terms with what is your definition mm-hmm. of intimacy? What is your definition of loyalty? Mm-hmm. You know, what is your definition yeah. of commitment? Those types of things. We just assume we're all operating from the same angle, mm-hmm. but understanding like we all have different experiences that have, you know, affected us in certain ways. Yeah. And so you just have to be able to come to terms with, what what is your definition? What's my de- definition? And what's the definition that we create together? Yeah, I think that's so important. And we talked about that on our last episode. Like you have to be intentional about those, those things. And I think that's one of the pitfalls, right, in marriage that people do not come together and have those conversations because you think that it's a given. And you think yeah. you know what lo- you know mm-hmm. what loyalty is because right. This is it's what a it universal means to me. Right. It's universal, like right. you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. But that's not the that's not the case. You have to. Leave. That's an abstract word. It, yeah, there was, a lot of those things yeah. are abstract. You know, and we're coming in like it's concrete. Oh, look, everybody should know, right. but we don't. Yeah, like what yeah. is cheating? What is considered cheating? Mm-hmm. Right. You know, like actually lay that out, and right. people don't do that, right. and that does cause a lot of friction in relationships. I do have a question though about traumatic relationships. So, how does a person begin to heal? Um, from a traumatic relationship or experience? You know, first getting to the point of recognizing, like, you know, what you went through, admitting like it was painful, Mm. right? But not taking on the space of, like, you have to be victim. Mm. Because a lot of times people like to lay into the role of a victim. They did this to me, they did this to me, they did this to me, you know, without recognizing that sometimes you ignored all of the things that showed this behavior was there the whole time. You know, give me some more shit. Pass the glass. Pass the glass. Take it to the hand, child. 
I love it here. <laughs> the you know, red you ignore, flag. You ignore all of those factors that are there, you know, yeah. hoping for this ideal of what you want it to be. And it's like, oh, we just work it out. It's like a Jesus there. complex where we just think we can save them. Yeah. And I say we like it's the person it's, on the it's other denial. side. It's denial. Oh, it's denial. Right. Because you won't recognize that this is not a good fit. Just because mm. y'all both showed up and both said that y'all wanted a relationship doesn't mean that y'all are necessarily compatible. Oh, can you say that one more time? <laughs> right? You know, you know, oftentimes people just get in relationships. <laughs> I get into it all the time. And sometimes I'm looking at, I have couples before me and I was like, how did y'all get together? Yes, <laughs> nothing right. about this it was makes tumultuous sense. From nothing the about this makes sense. But both of y'all just decided y'all wanted something. Yeah. And a lot of times people have come from broken homes. Mm. Broken doesn't mean like it's two parents in there or whatever, but just broken where there is no function. Everything mm -hmm. is dysfunctional. Yeah. You know, and because there is no model that you can pattern it by, you're just like, I don't have a pattern to go by, but I'm just gonna make it work mm -hmm. without really stopping to get the tools to yeah. make it work. You're making it up as you go. Yeah. Somebody said that don't look at a relationship for where you want it to be or where you envision it to be, but look at it for like where what it is, is right, like right. right now. What right. are you in right now? Mm -hmm. That's your reality, yeah. right? I think a lot of women specifically get caught up in the idea, what it could the be. potential, the idea. Yes. The idea. Yeah. Yes. for sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what is it right now? But what is it right now? And that's probably what it will continue <laughs> to be. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, well, not, but it will. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But we get so caught up in the dream the fairy tale yeah. mm -hmm. like you said we want something mm -hmm. and not really recognize the situation for what it is yeah right. and getting back to your point about the traumatic how do you heal like having some sense of accountability right understand like these things did happen to you not saying it's always your fault but what did you do to contribute to the problem by not acknowledging some things that were happening mm -hmm. you know that shouldn't have been in that space right and then being able to figure out okay well these are the things i didn't pay attention to last time so next time i get into a situation when I notice something that doesn't feel right, I want to talk about it. Right. And I'm going to accept the word for what it is. Because sometimes you get people who's like, this is just who I am. Yeah. You should accept it. Oh, I can't stand it. And if that. they tell you that, believe it. Believe them. Them. Yeah. yeah. It's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to believe you right <laughs> there. Right. You're right. <laughs> you know, you know, but if you, you ain't see, never tell a lie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but if you see change behavior and it's consistent, then go with that. But sometimes mm -hmm. people who know how to manipulate, mm. they'll give you some change behavior just enough to shut you up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you is know, that a narcissist? That can be. Okay. But that's manipulation. That is. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. On any given day, <laughs> this manipulation, right, you know, because right. people know how to do that. You know, and that's another well, thing. Everybody would love that? to go into the narcissism and the gaslighting and yeah. all yeah, these yeah, trendy yeah, things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yes, it's a whole rabbit hole. Yeah. But how, right. how, how, if you can explain this, just in layman's term. While you explain it, do you mind just passing the ball? Oh, yeah. Oh, but why, why, <laughs> why would, why does a person, in male or female, treat a person that they're in a relationship with badly and then when the person finally gets the strength and the courage Believe. to leave the situation why do then they come back and love bomb and try to get that person back mm. at all costs why don't they just let them go so since we're talking about the narcissist right oftentimes that that comes from a place of insecurity like you portray yourself with all this confidence right yes but there's a deep-rooted insecurity that exists and so if you can dominate someone to thinking that you are higher that you know, that uh, you hire, are higher than them, that you have this dominance mm. that keeps them right where they need to be without them focusing on your flaws. Mm. You keep them confused about their experience, right? You start making mm. them question when they come to you and try to hold you accountable for something. It's like, no, that didn't happen. You know, the whole gaslighting effect, mm. you know, but when they're ready to leave, if they feel like they're getting smart and getting hip to the game, oh no, and then I'm going to change my behavior and right. keep you in that pattern. But if you're smart enough, you have to be able to say, you know, and I, I hate to see it because I see women oftentimes when they come looking for help, they really want it to work. I say it can't work unless that person is willing to take account for their situation, mm -hmm. you know, that they want to change the behavior. Right. Yeah. You know, but oftentimes it's like people aren't born as a narcissist. Mm -hmm. People aren't born with personality disorders. It's something traumatic that happened to them. Right. And at some point early in their developmental years. And so that's what has caused some of these personality traits mm -hmm. and it's worked for them because it's used to protect them, to protect themselves. Right. Yeah. Correct. You know, and unfortunately a lot of people get lost in the casualty of war as a result of it. Yeah. You yeah. know, so, but we have to remember that we can't be so desperate for a relationship right. that we ignore all of the factors that tell you like, this is not the healthy relationship. So the only way that a narcissist can <laughs> recover <laughs> is if they 
try to well first of all acknowledge that they're narcissists and then try to kind of well it, it requires some, some real deep therapy because so some, some people are some people are going regular yeah some people go through regular therapy so. right is it curable it, yeah, yeah. I, it's a personality I hear back and forth online like it's not curable once a narcissist always a narcissist but the, I, and then so I hear that, the opposite that, that, that bitterness, could be a healed narcissist that's the bitterness that okay. people talk about it's like oh yeah, there's never you know you but that be wanting to do the work and willing to do the work because that comes from this therapy the DBT you know so it's a different in depth form of therapy that people have to go through. Sometimes it's you got to go twice a week and then you got to go to group therapy. It's really so it's therapy. really, yeah. really deep. Intense. It's intense. So you have to be committed to that work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. To be able to do it. So it's capable, but don't fool yourself to just say somebody said that they're going to do it. If you're not seeing them make that change, Mm -hmm. you know, but you don't have to be a witness to it the whole time. You could really believe in somebody, but give yourself the space to go do your own healing while they go do theirs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you get damaged waiting on somebody else to do their healing. It's like you don't want to keep sacrificing yourself. Right. You know, for that, because you're missing out on the life that you definitely you know, are deserving of. Or, right. So why do you think so many people stay in situations way longer than they should when all of the signs and the red flags are there? I think it often comes to a point like people are communicating to themselves like I can't get anything better. Mm-hmm. So it's just a matter of self-worth at that point. Oh, mm-hmm. Because if you don't That's feel painful, you know, it because is. you don't feel so powerful sad. enough to say I can walk away from this, I yeah. deserve better. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to stay in this just because, well, all the dynamics are here. It, it looked like it was here once before I could get back to that space again. Yeah. Right? You know, so it's this false hope that it's keeping them in that space. Right. But it's mm-hmm. like, you no, know, you don't deserve to be in a situation that keeps causing you pain. Yeah. Don't. And people hang on to the good. They yeah. hang on to the good memories, even though they're few and Probably far between. Probably 1% of it. <laughs> yeah. I just, but I feel like, you know, people hang on to those moments, yeah. cling on to those moments, reminisce on those moments, have those kind of as a North Star, hoping that they can get back to those moments. And 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 that probably makes it really tough for folks to get out of the situation that's and harmful to them. I also think, too, that those people also have the childhood issues oh yeah right? abandonment with, with, issues mm-hmm. yes right. yeah, abandonment fear of issues. being alone yeah. anxious People or avoiding right. based right. off of like yeah. not getting the attention mm-hmm. of- attention yeah. as a child or being emotionally emotionally yeah. neglected as a child right mm-hmm. right all and of, so all of that. yeah there's also, some work that needs to be done on that side as well right yeah also like the narrative that they keep telling themselves if they don't know how to affirm themselves they're waiting on someone else to do it but if you're getting the narrative you're not worth anything you'll never get anybody better right. than me you'll never get anybody with you and these kids you'll never you know all of these things that telling you anything that to make you feel devalued they believe on those mm-hmm. things and so yes. that's what keeps them in prison in that relationship that's not going anywhere that's a big word <laughs> that's a big so word I, I have a question so i think about our audience and um uh, we have I'm the one who looks at the analytics. Females, anywhere from 35 to 44, that's our demographic. Um, Married, separated, divorced, single. Um, What are some things for our single women out there? If If they are thinking or wanting to get into a relationship, what would you say are the top three things that they should be having as their evaluative criteria when they're looking and seeking out a partner or evaluating a partner for long-term, a long-term relationship? Well, let me just twist it because it's not like it's three values, top three. No, no, no. But but just what I tell clients who are coming in, like this is something they really want, you know, because this is the safe space. When they come to therapy, is their their safe space. I feel safe here, just for the record. I feel very (laughs) Very safe. safe. Even though this is being recorded, I lay it out. Hold on. Right. Right. Where, where, where can I book? Where can I book? I can't stand us. <laughs> But no, definitely. Come on, yes. I'm gonna throw myself over the chair, right? No. Oh, it's an ugly cry, child. Right. You know, but that's this place where they feel like they can be real raw with their yes. uh, their truth. Mm-hmm. But when they get out in the public, it's like, oh no, no, I don't want that fine. because yeah. because it's like it the optics it, it, it opens them to be hurt, right? Like, but if I put on this defense, like, no, I don't need that then you don't have to worry about getting hurt, right? Mm -hmm. Because you have this shield on. But I always tell clients when they're talking about, well, I want to be open to it, but I'm scared. You know, there's nothing out there and all these things. It's like, you really have to uh, identify the qualities that are really important to you. Mm -hmm. Not the surface level stuff, like the qualities that are really, really important to you in a partner, an ideal partner. 
And when you really become clear of what that is and why, when you meet people, when they approach you, you could just measure up, does this person in alignment with the qualities that I've you know, determined that are right. important to me? Mm-hmm. And when they don't, you don't waste time trying to convince them to have these qualities. You don't waste time there. Right. Yeah. I think a lot of the t- pain and torture comes from wasting time in places when you're trying mm-hmm. to make situations line up with stuff it has no business doing right. or not even having an intention to be to begin with. Right. You have to be intentional, you know, and so being able to decide like, OK, these qualities are these are my non-negotiable. Right. Mm-hmm. And being able to figure out, make sure that you're reasonable. You know, no mm-hmm. one is going to walk in a place perfect. Right. Yeah. We're not perfect beings, so we can't expect perfection from anyone. Yeah. You know, so being able to be reasonable about those things and just have an accountability partner, someone you could trust, not going to tell you just what you want to hear mm-hmm. or not someone who's going to try to control you because they have somewhere they can benefit from you remaining single or being in a relationship. But, you know, somebody who can keep you accountable to say, OK, is this relationship? Is it something that's enjoyable? Or is it something that you just want to say that because I have a man or I have a woman, right. mm-hmm. you know, because sometimes people just get so caught up in the wanting the titles. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and, and some people s- will stay in things a lot just longer for the just for the title. And it might not be an abusive or, you know, mentally anguishing situation, but like, it's not enjoyable. The not thought enjoyable. of, yeah, yeah, it's not enjoyable. The thought of not being in a relationship yeah. or not being married, or feeling or being, like a failure, feeling like yeah. a failure, like they'll stay in but things longer than they need to. Yeah. Understand for sure for just working a home relationship, but in a marriage, what's the threshold or tolerance because that's supposed to be until death do you part. Right. So at what mm-hmm. point? Them vows, and, child. Right. Them in vows. marriage, do you just be like, I, I can't do this anymore? Right. I, <laughs> I think it also comes from the shared values. Right. It has to be the contract that you both negotiate, not one person dictating like this is what's going to work. Something that you both buy into, yeah. you know, and their shared responsibility. Because if one person feels like they're doing all the work or you don't know how to handle uh, conflict, because some people are conflict avoidant. Mm-hmm. just because it's like oh I don't like confrontation okay conflict and confrontation are not the same mm-hmm. you know but just being able to have those difficult conversations so that you can have a mutual respect or an understanding about what it is that you're dealing with and understanding like not all conflict is resolvable mm-hmm. you know understanding like you do have core convictions core values that may be very different mm-hmm. but how do you move forward in spite of How do of we agree to yeah. this? Yeah, right. How you, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and not hold it against somebody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just learning how do you work through those challenging times? Yeah. But if you're always attacking somebody, you know, if you feel devalued, if you feel neglected, you know, that's time to figure out like, okay, why am I staying in this space? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, because the title of relationship is not making me happy like I think it is. Yeah. And some people will talk about, oh, we're doing it for the kids. And even the kids, I've had... <laughs> I, I spent time in um, education. I was 10 years as an educator, all at the high school level. And, you know, and I deal with, even today, I have adult clients who talk about it. It's like my parents said they, they're doing it, you know, for us. And I'm like, I don't even know why they're together. Why? Like, right. everybody yeah. can see. Yeah. Ray Charles can see. This relationship is a mess. I think sometimes that's an excuse. It is. Yeah, yes, for it people is. to stay in a situation. Who lack courage. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They don't have the courage to just mm-hmm. call it quits. Mm-hmm. Well, that um, too, and people are just really keen on image, right? Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. going to present this image. Mm-hmm. Everything is perfect. Yes. Everything is mm-hmm. in these colored yes. in the lines or whatever. Yes. Sometimes stuff is going to get out of line. Sometimes yeah. things yeah. are going to be messy. Right. Gonna be messy. And that's okay life. if it's you messy. Gotta, you got to be real about it. You know, but how do you recover? Because right. nobody's grading you on a system like, oh, you failed because right. that yes. didn't happen. But how did you work through it? How did you overcome it? Exactly. And I always say like your marriage or your relationship is your relationship or your marriage. And what works for someone else might not work for you. And so I, I really do believe in that because people choose to get separated, divorced, break up for a number of reasons. But at the end of the day, like society will say, well, you have a partner who does this. You have a partner who does that. You have a partner who shows up this way. Yeah. But, if that, sh- but the, if that shit don't resonate with, with me, me right. at the end of the day, mm-hmm. like I can appreciate that partner for somebody else. But what mm-hmm. what I need, what's important to me is a little bit different. And Correct. if they're bringing ABC and I need XYZ, mm-hmm. yeah. it's not going to match. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the why I hate when people have all these formulas out here, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's like, oh, if you do XYZ, you know, everybody comes out with this formula. This is how this is how you get the relationship that you want. Mm-hmm. You know, but it's like, like you said, it's a shared 
understanding what yeah. you mutually agree upon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's like if you say, oh, I did X, Y, Z and I can't believe this is not happening because you're ignoring the factors that are personal to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and if that doesn't resonate with you, why are you buying into it? Yeah. yeah. You know, blindly just going through stuff, trying to do stuff. You have to be able to resonate. Trust your instinct. Right. Trust, understand. It's like, OK, if something is telling you something is not right, right. address it. Yeah. And yeah. if y'all are willing to work through it, so be it. But yeah. if not, there's this resistance, then you have to be able to understand it's like, OK, if I walk away from this, you're not a failure, mm -hmm. you know, but you are making yourself available to, you know, become the whole person that you need to be. Mm -hmm. And then first. so that you could walk into a relationship with healthy boundaries. Yes. Yes. You know, and so and I think too often people don't do those things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't look at what's healthy or not healthy. Mm -hmm. It's just like, oh, I just try to make so many excuses. But, but we love each other. You might be confusing the passion, the mm -hmm. sex or whatever. Sex. But sex may be very great. The makeup sex. People love to talk, but makeup sex is great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But like, okay, but all the rest of the time, everything it's is shitty. Yeah. detrimental. Right. You know? It's like, okay, but which which do you prioritize? Right. Your well-being or just prioritize the sex? the sex. That's what they hold on to. But it's mm -hmm. like at the end of the day. That's not that the really overarching thing yeah. that could just make life go well. Yeah. yeah. Because sex is not going to get you through grief. Mm, you no. know, sex is not going to get you through bankruptcy. Sex mm. is not going to get you through those really trying times. It that won't. Really come to <laughs> no. No. <laughs> that, that was me asking a question and saying it at the same time. My bad. I was like, it won't. It won't. You know. No, it won't. <laughs> okay. Okay. What she speaking, of sex, speaking of sex. Speaking of sex. Yeah. Because you are a sex therapist mm -hmm. and we want to get, I mean, we can go on about relationships all day. We're going to have you back. Because I like questions. And we're going to have a part questions. two. We have to. We but have to. we have to get to the, sex. the SEX. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because you're a sex Le therapist. Sex. And can you first explain what is a sex therapist? So a sex therapist, one, probably helps people who are having challenges, you know, with sex in their relationship to be able to do that. And someone is just being able to help coach you through some things to help you get to the better sex life. Because sometimes people have experienced trauma early on where they've been violated before yeah. and they show up into the relationship not really enjoying sex, mm -hmm. you know, because of not really working through some of those things. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, some of it is just really just figuring out like, not based off of what society determines as sex, so like what works for you and your partner. Mm -hmm. You know, so I come in and just be able to help people drop off the this pressure of what everybody else says that this should be. Right. And yeah. just be able to help you find your truth your own right, definition. about what it is. Because sometimes it's like a religion. Sometimes it can make you feel guilty about something that's very natural. Mm hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and so if you're because I have clients who show up to me, it's like I have this porn addiction. I was like, what makes you think you have a porn addiction? Mm -hmm. Well, because because what, you know, is porn addiction natural? Porn uh, there's, or is, is, is there what such is, thing what as porn, is porn addiction? addiction? That's what I'm saying. So I mean, like, that's not being addiction. able to control yourself with you know, the amount of but, porn that you but watch. But some people just think just because I, I <laughs> watch happening? it. You know? <laughs> what is happening? Like, like, you watching porn but, but, at work? We had somebody watching porn. Yeah. One of my employees was watching porn while oh, he was that, supposed to be working. That happened. And got busted. Mm -hmm. well, that that be considered that's a porn you, addiction? That's just you being irresponsible. In a, you know, <laughs> on the work in laptop, in a, child? In a, in a on the work laptop, child. Disgust. We saw all the stills. <laughs> all of it. What was he into? I don't know. Okay, just, just ask Regular, him. girl. Just regular. Okay, just, you know. just don't know how to draw the line about yeah. like what's appropriate in certain spaces. Right. Yeah, that's when out of where. control. That's out of control. But, you know, just understanding like you're sex drive everything is going to vary from person to person yeah and we can't let society determine mm -hmm. oh this is abnormal or this is what you cannot do mm -hmm. you know because now it has this cognitive dissonance from a person because it's like well i feel this way inside but everybody else is telling me i shouldn't feel this way and now they're walking around conflicted about you know mm -hmm. how to operate right you know so we have to make sure that we're not buying into what everybody else tells us mm -hmm. yes what should and should not happen. I feel so strongly at this stage in life about like not allowing society to put definitions on yeah. whatever it is for, for, me. You. for you. Yeah. Like what is me is yeah. for me. And the only person or thing that can define that is me. Correct. Yeah. Life is too so short to be yeah. boxed in. It's a, but I think the sucky part and the great part, mm -hmm. I feel like women don't realize that until we're or like until we hit those 40s. Mm -hmm. Right. I think we spend a lot of our younger years really trying to fit inside of that people box. pleasing for and, yeah sure. and conform mm -hmm. into what mm -hmm. society their expectations should be right. exactly mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. especially because the focus is on finding a partner yeah finding that long-term partner being a good can, wife right mm -hmm. you can procreate yeah. with being a good wife being a good mother being a good mom yeah right. but you got to pay attention to do your sex drives even match 
Because if you're getting with someone with a very high sex drive and yours is very low, then that's going to be problematic. That's going to cause some problems. (laughs) Yeah. You know, and just being able to do that. And also, you talked about the age, you know, thing. Also, entering into the 40s. What are we talking about right now? (laughs) What are we talking about? Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's Let's talk talk about about you and me. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Yeah. Let's go, please go. So, women in their 40s in the sex drive. Sometimes things happen. You know, we walk into a different change of life mm-hmm. and people just accept menopause is in like all of the things that come with it is like oh this is over now mm-hmm. you know and and it gets to the point of like you know everybody's dissatisfied because like what was once there is no longer there like, what are you supposed to do but uh, oftentimes because of a lack of knowledge we just subscribe well this is it this is just what i'm right. dealing with you know but i think it just has to be a sense of awareness uh i think when we were talking at the um hair salon mm-hmm. you know we we're just talking about um the issue comes up about vaginal dryness mm-hmm. and you know because you get to a stage where there's perimenopause or menopause like you lack the you know you have the dryness and that's a problem you know if people deal with the lube or whatever to help with that space, but it's like the drive and when that starts deteriorating, people think, okay, well, this is just what it is. But there are things out there that mm. help, you know, put your hormones back in Hormonal balance therapy, to get that hormonal yeah. therapy, the pellet therapy, you know, that I've heard therapy. about this. Yes. It's so amazing. why have what people the, the pellet, the pellet therapy where they put yes. these pe- pellets, pellets. I, I'm oh, not, yeah, I'm yeah, not that's speak what we're on about. it, they, but they put the pellets yes. in you. I'm going to speak on it because I'm a, you know, pellet user. Okay. Tell us about the pellets, You know, because it gets in because, you know, that it's a very, you know, real thing when your hormones are off, everything starts, you know, being affected. And it's not just in sexual nature. Sometimes your focus is off. Sometimes it's hard trying to grasp words that you want in a normal conversation. Sometimes it's just, you know, the night sweats. Girl, I had that in my 30s. You know, the, yes. And so all of those things happen and we just, uh, you know, think, oh, this is just that stage of life just because that's what we've been told about, you know, but. But that's, I mean, now there's something for everything, child. You can fix whatever it is that you need to fix this day and age. Like, Mm -hmm. you don't have to accept anything for what it is. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it, it, right? If you don't like it, change it. And once you do, you you know, do your research and understand, like, this is something that I want Mm -hmm. to do, you know, it feels good, go talk to a professional professional about right. it and you know do your research and subscribe to it and just figure out you know if this is something these are things that are available to help enhance the relationship yeah. mm-hmm. because just because you reach a certain age doesn't mean like death has and you know over, sex right. has to go to the sex cemetery yeah. you know in that part of it marriage let me ask that. i have a question though because i read an article about women having unwanted sex to maintain their relationship and there is a willingness to have sex like okay i'll do it if your man's coming on to you i'll do it but there's not necessarily a desire to do so Mm -hmm. um you talked about like differing sex drives right um and there's a lot of other different factors i guess that weigh into a woman's desire to want to have sex Mm -hmm. but is that toxic having sex because you're trying to please a person or maintain a relationship um instead of because you desire it and want it yourself i won't say toxic but it is unhealthy Right. Because you're you're not paying attention to what works, because oftentimes you're not mm-hmm. desiring it because certain things, certain aspects are, are missing, missing out of the relationship right. to mm-hmm. begin with. Mm-hmm. You know, certain people just sub- subscribe. Well, we're married and you're supposed this is your duty. Yeah. So well, is that not a thing? Who? Let's talk about that. Because like, no, says that's who? who, you know, okay. because says like, who? Right. <laughs> society. <laughs> right. <laughs> society. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because yes. oh. you have to just come to terms with like, let, let this make, I, I often talk to clients sometimes it's like, well, I want this in the relationship or I need these things to make the relationship. And now the relationship is very task driven. Mm. Like who yes. wants to go through a relationship where I'm just checking who off the list? To be task that's master. not, that's not like enjoyable. The task Cause master. now you're just going through the motions, mm-hmm. right? So being able to figure out how to get back to the friendship, the foundation of the relationship. Mm. Cause sometimes the career, the kids, all of these other responsibilities, Responsibilities get in the way of the actual relationship, you know, and so being able to get back to that space, there are tools available, you know, for that. Yeah, I I do. I host workshops, you know, to be able to help people get that skill building to get back to those those connections, those romantic connections, the the friendship space. But, you know, but it's like sometimes we just get all of that. It's like, okay, but the one thing we're going to hold on to is sex. Mm-hmm. But like, no, it all comes together. Like, mm-hmm. I can't enjoy the sex with you if all of these other things are missing. If I'm yeah. feeling neglected, right. yeah. if I'm feeling disregarded, yeah. if I, you know, if I come to you with an issue <clears throat> and you're dismissive about it, mm-hmm. how can I show up for you in the bedroom right. yes. when you haven't showed up for me Outside any day of the week? Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
So is it true that women want sex when they feel emotionally close and for men, sex is a way of becoming emotionally close? I think it varies for saying. individuals. Okay. You know, because some women just look at sex and it's just, you know, there's no emotional attachment to it. Oh, mm. You know, <laughs> you know, it, you know, but in, just, in a relationship or as a single woman just living her best life? Individuals, you know, like oh. I say, it's all based on an individual. Sometimes, like I say, we get into these patterns like, oh, this is a woman, this man, this is a man's thing. Mm-hmm. But no, this is what so this there is. So there are women out there who just are having sex. They're sucking and fucking, yeah. Well, oh, oh, well, I didn't I, give it to y'all. Like, you don't they're, have to fuck me mentally. They're just... trying to move through this world like men. Right. Oh. But, but the reality no, but still, is, but oh, there's like, a oh. huh? Say it again. The, the reality is, is that like, in my opinion, I'm not going to say the reality. In my opinion, I think that's a coping mechanism, right? Because mm. they've gone through, or they've had experiences where maybe they haven't been loved or they've been abused or they've come from situations that have been traumatic. And so in an mm-hmm. effort to still get their rocks off, but not necessarily be damaged by it, they, they shift their thinking sometimes. or to feel wanted. Sometimes that's an issue, but sometimes it's just a person who just really just has a high sex drive. Mm-hmm. And it's like, sometimes people know that, you know, and oftentimes because in our, in our community, we're just coming into terms with the polyamory. Right. Ooh. Polygamy. And all of I these things. Right? I, I had a question. I had a question. I'm going to do a part two now. We, 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 we got to do a part two because I got all these sex questions. You, that we got, I got to get off. Yeah. Well, so not all of what's them. What's the, not all of them. But, but what's the juiciest one? The juiciest one. Oh, the juiciest one. 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 The juiciest I think being able to ask for what you want, right? Because sometimes we always want to talk about, oh, you're doing this wrong. Mm-hmm. No one's going to receive their will. <laughs> mm-hmm. no. Oh, really? Nobody's going to receive it. Oh, you just doing this. Oh, that shit hurt. Because now you're going to give somebody, because now you're going to give somebody <laughs> a complex. Yellow. You know, if you might right. be able to say, okay, I need you to be a little bit more gentle in this face. Oh, I need you to be a little bit more rougher in this face. Because it depends on an individual. Some people just like it rough, mm-hmm. you know, and somebody might be coming into it knowing like, you know, you have experienced trauma in your life and I don't want to traumatize you, you know, so they might be being too careful in the one end is like, right. no, I don't need you to be able mm-hmm. to think about that. Like, mm-hmm. this is what I need, you know, so just being able able to communicate your needs but what if a person is not doing something like what if a person just <clears throat> not like really good at like maybe giving oral sex so that was or, gonna be my question again because i so, feel like that is the one area that like men feel like they're good at but, but at the they, end of the day they suck really so like, if you know what you want you should be able to communicate coach them through their process okay mm-hmm. you know because sometimes coach. we put too much of that responsibility on them oh you should arrive at this but mm-hmm. we all had to learn from somewhere but okay. i feel like when you have to when you coach them through it especially in the midst i'm not of talking it, about in the midst of okay it. No, okay. Let's be clear. You know, you might have to yeah you might have to away from the experience give right? that one up right. but, gotcha, but, but sometimes but, you can guide but sometimes you can you can guide like oh wait wait right here right there you know like sometimes you know so way, move that you know, way. You know, the, the, role, the role playing, right? Was like, oh, do this. That's you when know, I go so to the nightstand. <laughs> yeah. Which brings up my next question. Yeah. Is masturbation alone okay when you're in a relationship? It's a natural part. Is it though? It's, it, if it, you it's don't. Natural. <laughs> it, it, it's a natural thing. Like I said, some we let people come in and define like, oh, these things which you should not do. Mm-hmm. But these are natural. Your body's natural reactions to mm-hmm. things. Right. Mm-hmm. And so you have to come to terms with like all of that stuff that we were communicating. Oh, you should be ashamed of doing this. Oh, mm-hmm. you should be ashamed. Remove that judgment mm-hmm. so yeah. that you could just really just do what you need to do. So is it not a betrayal when you're married? <gasps> <sighs> what? No. I'm just asking a question no, for, our no, listeners, no. for our listeners. Okay. For our listeners. Obviously. It's not opinions. considered a betrayal when you masturbate and you have a partner, a spouse at home. It's a natural part. Isn't it's natural? Okay. Personally, yeah. there you go. Pers- the, the, you have your answer. There you go. Personally, I like to I like to save the orgasm, right? So I'd mm-hmm. rather have the large orgasm for my partner versus have it by myself. Mm-hmm. That way, we're both experiencing together. Yeah. Together, right? Yes, I don't know. Maybe I'm just the masturbation train. I have not. Oh, is I'm there on a, it. Is there an issue with people who Bitch, don't the necessarily conductor. like to na- masturbate? Is there an issue with yeah. them? Well, sometimes, it, 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 not to say that there's something wrong, but sometimes they're not really enjoying life, right? <laughs> there's that, there's that, 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 <laughs> there, there's that, there's that pent up energy sometimes, you know, just not because. Enjoy- Miserable. 
<laughs> Miserable bitch. That's what I said. <laughs> Masturbation is a form of mindfulness. I said this like last yeah, last you know, season. But like I said, because you, some people have associated with, oh, well, this, uh, you know, associate with this, with this, right. you know, this this uh freeness or whatever you know it's like but like who says mm -hmm. who says that has to be your rules for you that's the, a great your question. body is for you not for somebody who has never met you to dictate mm -hmm. what should be your norm so we shouldn't tell men like this pussy is yours oh <laughs> you mean you know if, if that's gonna make it more pleasurable <laughs> for the both of you right now nobody's saying oh, they should go take that in. literal right right, oh, right. right. you know because like all of us are in you know in control of our own right. body that's we're, right we're absolutely free right. independent absolutely. people absolutely yes. don't yes. take that shit exactly. literal do not, exactly. that, do you know, not take but, that literal like if that's your kink in the bedroom but leave it there yeah don't exactly. let, let the, the kink point. be the like, kink like, yeah, right right but don't get out there and just be like oh yeah that's my don't grab me by the pussy but we out right yeah don't do that don't do but that. a lot of times right. men yeah. take that it's literal like they, they have a hard time letting women go because they have a sense of ownership mm -hmm. over yeah, yeah a woman and I mean you know that leads to all different kind of things like Mental, abuse right, and right. even it death just, sometimes it just like, shows you you showing up like I said authentically as yourself yeah. full of your own power you don't allow anybody else to dictate what belongs to you you mm -hmm. know them yeah. of you yeah owning your you know owning your you know your full womanhood mm -hmm. What an exciting time to be alive and what an exciting time to be a woman. <laughs> well, I have one mm -hmm. more question. I have one as well. Around okay. sex. Okay. Okay, well, go ahead. I'll no, give no, you, no. I'll give you the floor, <laughs> no, my no, no. sister. We're doing such a great job on the sex <laughs> we, I know. So ahead, it, I, it's such a great conversation. I know. We have to have Just a part Just go ahead because I, mm -hmm. I would like to end on my question. Okay. So mine doesn't have to do with sex, okay. but um, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about how many couples post-pandemic have just falling apart. And I know in the last two to three weeks, we've seen and heard that established couples that have been married for double digit years um, have divorced or have announced that they're divorcing. And a lot of that is coming. And we saw a lot of that post pandemic. Right. So what, what would you say? And I know like there's varying opinions on that, but like, what would you say is really at the root of this, like, just significant increase in like relationships ending post pandemic a, and then B, what are some things that couples can do to avoid, you know, and I'm not saying we're going into another pandy, but like, what are some things that couples can do to make sure that that isn't their, their story and their ending? I'll say, you know, before the pandemic, there was busyness, right? Mm -hmm. We had all this opportunity to do other things to distract us from yeah. whatever issues are at home. Right. Yeah. Like, okay, because sometimes it's like, let me go do this. Let me go hang with the boys. Let me go hang with my girls. Mm -hmm. You know, let me go work these extra hours. Like right. some people do a lot of things to avoid being at home because home is just not yeah. ideal Peaceful. or it's not enjoyable. Yeah. yeah. You know, but during the pandemic, you didn't have those options. Mm -hmm. stuck. stuck. Mm -hmm. Right. And so when you have to define your relationship as being stuck, that's not an ideal place to be in. Yeah. You know, and so now you're feeling trapped. Instead of trying to figure out, well, how do I get back to the place where it's enjoyable? Right. Now you're looking at the other person as an enemy. Everything mm -hmm. about them irritates you, mm -hmm. you know, and you don't know how to separate the behavior from the personality. Mm -hmm. Now it's an attack every time that mm -hmm. you talk about like all of these things, because, as, you know, as a, a couples therapist, I use the Gottman method. And one of the things that we're trained on is like when you come into, you think about the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Mm -hmm. You know, there is the criticism, there is defensiveness, there is stonewalling, and then there is uh, contempt. Mm -hmm. Contempt, right? So the criticism is like it's you. Uh, everything is about you, right? I'm blaming you for everything instead of identifying the actual behavior. Mm -hmm. You have to learn how to separate those things mm -hmm. because if you're targeting this person and telling them you do this, you always do this mm -hmm. or whatever, that's going to automatically put them on the defense. Right. right. And now you're in the cyclical pattern because now you're feeling like what you're saying is not valid because they won't take time to be accountable for whatever it is that you're accusing them of because mm -hmm. they're, you know, they're not listening. Right. And then you have this uh, contempt, you know, where it's like, you know, it's condescending where you're just like really trying to be demeaning, like you're just uh, looking down on someone, like you despise them. Mm -hmm. And then there's the, um, the stonewalling where you just really shut down, mm -hmm. not really being able to work through some things. It's like, I'm treatment. just going to shut down, right? So the, um, the answers for that or the treatments for that or the interventions for that is like, okay, instead of the criticism, mm -hmm. 
learn the gentle startups, the I, the I, you know, messaging. You know what? When this behavior happens, this is effect. I feel like this. That's very different. When you do this, you know, this is all you do all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, that just puts me on attack. Now you're attacking my character. Yeah. Right? You're attacking yes. my personality. You're saying right. my personality is flawed. Yes. Right. So, yeah, no one's going to admit to that. You know, but when you're learning how to communicate effectively, then you want somebody to like, okay, you know, I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to make you feel shut out. I don't want to make you feel ignored. Mm -hmm. You know, so I apologize for these things. Right. Mm -hmm. And so instead of the defensiveness, which is like avoiding accountability or just really just reversing the blame, being able to like, I apologize for whatever that experience, learning how to validate your partner. Right. You know, and then so the, important. Right. And then the contempt, right? How do you avoid that is being able to learn how to appreciate the qualities about your partner, being able to show gratitude for the things that you really enjoy about them. And then the stonewalling, you know, sometimes learning how to self-soothe because sometimes you may be so heated in the moment that I can't not talk about this right now without right. being actually destructible. So right. let me have my space. But sometimes women get that anxious. Well, not even women, but just someone who's with that anxious attachment is like, no, I need to talk about it now to know yeah. that you love me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you're operating in this space like that control again. It's like, right. no, you can't walk away because it's walking away from me. Mm -hmm. And now you're forcing somebody to be in a space where they're trying to save everybody right. by walking away. And so being able to figure out, okay, if I need time to cool down, I need time to process this. Let me have 30 minutes. Let me have an hour. Let's talk, let's revisit this tomorrow. But sometimes with the stonewall, people just shut down and there's no revisiting it. Yeah. And so it's unresolved. And so yeah. it's just there. So what do you do if like you are able to actually have those conversations in the moment, but the person that you're with needs to take that time? Cause I don't know about you, but I'm over here. I'm, you like, have to have the conversation like right now. Yeah, I I, I need to have I, I have like a need to, to have the conversation within just work it out a, within a, I won't say a designated time frame, but like I don't like to go to sleep angry. Mm. Um, so if I am feeling frustrated, if I am feeling mad, I do have a desire to want to talk it out in in that evening or in that moment. But if you have somebody who's not able to do that, right? Because I need to collect your thoughts or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. How do you prevent yourself from wanting to fucking put their clothes in the car and pour lighter <laughs> fluid over it and light that bitch up? Yeah. Because like all I'm doing is festering yeah. and like having to exercise every level of emotional intelligence right. and restraint. And restraint yeah. But like that's killing me, but I know that that's necessary in order for us to move through this. But that behavior says you need to process the <laughs> you, need to process. <laughs> like, like that. you need a you need time need out to work on you. Okay. <laughs> you need the time out as well. You right. Know, but you, you need, need to work on your but, 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 but in the being moment, able to I'm take in consideration that it's two people in this relationship. Yeah. That's and you true. have to yeah. come to a mutual mutual is the yeah. main thing of the night, right? Mm -hmm. Having to come to a mutual agreement that works for both of us. Mm -hmm. It can't be all the way for one person or all the way for one because right. There's that resentment that comes in. Yeah. It's like I have to keep changing to, you know, accommodate you. Yeah. And you don't do that for me. Right. And you that and that's the flip side for me. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're not having this conversation with me, like when I want to have this conversation, then we're stonewalling. And, and how long is too long to stonewall? Because that, that's, 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 that's counterproductive. Stonewall right? Jackson because over there. Like, how you, long is too long, right. child? Because now y'all walking around in silence. Done. You know, right. Done. Now, now no only communication. communication is grunt. The worst. <laughs> you know, like, mm, you know, so he's like, oh, he's, like, he's like, oh, I just can't say it. You know, so now you got all this type of communication is counterproductive, mm. but just learning to, you know, be able to get to that space is like, you know what? I respect this person enough to let them have their space mm -hmm. to do this. And we're going to mutually agree to come back at this space and we're going to talk about it mm -hmm. without all the emotions high. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, that we could reasonably discuss it, mm -hmm. you know, with logic. Yeah. Because Logic's sometimes so when you're important. trying to get in that emotion part, logic is exempt. Yeah, yeah. out the window. <laughs> you know, out and, the door. and it's and it's uh, not reasonable to think that someone is going to reason okay. when they're in that space. Okay, yeah. So it's just coming to terms like, yeah, you know, I want it in the moment, but are you really going to get the desired results? The answer is no. Yeah, yeah. And then also being able to come back and have that conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, but like I said, you have to agree. Like, okay, you know what? I need time. Let me give time to process. And y'all agree upon a time when we're going to come back. Like an hour yeah. later, everybody should have time. If it's a space, if I need to go walk away, drive around or whatever, mm -hmm. and then come mm -hmm. back to the space, and you know, come up on a mutually agreed upon time that gives everybody the respect that they need to know. It's like, okay, I really care about you. And I want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And I really care about you. I'm going to give you your space. Mm -hmm. And then we come together when it's a suitable environment. And but then we can have, have to agree to that. 
right? You have mm-hmm. to have two willing parties, and if a person's just like, I just want my time and never mm-hmm. want to come back to the conversation. Well, that's a different that's communication. A different, yeah, exactly. Right. Well, and then assuming that's not the case, we can have the makeup sex. You can <laughs> exactly. You can definitely do then that, right? <laughs> back so, to sex. I'm gonna end it with I one last question. Throw, throw the, throw you, throw thank you for throwing an alley oop, child. Mm-hmm. Is there a such thing as having too much sex? It just comes on what you determine because is that for an individual or is that for the couple or is that for, for a couple? For a couple. Okay. So it just determines, you know, it depends on if someone is not feeling fulfilled, if someone is not um, enjoying the pleasure, right? The principles of sex when it's, you know, one, there has to be consent. Mm-hmm. Always. Right. Um, one, it has to be uh, non-exploitive. When it has to be a protected space, right? Protection from either STIs or, oh, or unintentional pregnancies. Mm-hmm. Um, it has to be shared values mm-hmm. and it has to be mutual pleasure. Mm-hmm. If those things aren't present, if you're only having sex just to please the other person, mm-hmm. then there's an imbalance. Yeah. Not to say that there's too much sex, but there's a problem in your sex life. Mm-hmm. You know, and learning how to get to the terms like some people like to avoid these things because it's like, oh, well, sex is just this is the thing. When we're in a relationship, you you owe this to me. Yeah. You know, you would like to have that because that's a natural part of the process. But there are so many other factors around it as well. You know, so learning how to respect your partner, having those five things in place makes it enjoyable all the way around. Because you yeah. want it to be a space where everybody is like, I'm looking forward to it. Right. Not like, okay, well, let me just, let me lay, just here lay here, here and, and receive. You know? yeah. Because even though, okay, yeah, you're getting off on that. The other right. person's getting off. Is it really enjoyable at that point? Yeah. That doesn't even feed the ego to right. know that, okay, well, I'm just getting it. Because yeah. then they opens the door for me to go out somewhere and have it enjoyable sex. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, we'll stay up. Hold up. <laughs> One more question because we did. You and this woman, I'm going to have to check if math was one of your majors. <laughs> Stay up on it. Okay, we were, like, we were so up, but this conversation is so good. Is. But I want to talk about, uh, on our last episode, we talked about a celebrity couple, Ray J and his wife, Princess, and mm. it came out that they were having threesomes in their relationship. She allowed that to happen because she wanted to please him, but yep. it went against like her morals and her principles. She didn't want to do it, but she did it to please her husband, right? Mm-hmm. So... Our consensus was, you know, there's nothing wrong with like maybe having kinks in your sex life with your sexual partner, but we didn't agree that you should go against your principles to try to make your partner happy, just kind of like what we're talking about Mm -hmm. today. But I don't know, like, just can we talk through like some of the kinks? What about just the kinks of just like what a sexual, what a partner may want? That his or her partner may, may not feel comfortable with. So, for example, like I've heard licking of, assholes. Licking ass. that's a exactly. thing right now. Like that a is man out there. who wants yeah. fingers up his butt. I can't get with. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, again. Like, I will die. Uh, yes. Like, I will die. <laughs> again, there's like, <laughs> like the, the shared values, right? Because you just can't agree to something trying to please the other person <laughs> because eventually there's their resentment. But if you're <laughs> <but> <laughs> It's the resentment because like, you know no, it goes against. No, like, it, correlation it, to my life. But this is the story yeah. that I've heard. But, like, yes. people are in these situations and they have these partners who have, like, these different kinks. Like, how do you go along to get along with that when you don't, like, agree with that? Where's the meat we have? You, you don't. <laughs> you don't. That? Like, if it goes against your core values or against what's something you're comfortable with, then it's not a safe space for you. Mm. And you should not be compromising what feels safe to you right. to please the other person. You know, and you should not be expecting anybody to compromise their things just to get the pleasure. You know, like, again, if it's not about the mutual satisfaction, then it's just really not enjoyable for the both of you. You know, now it's just a a task. Right. Now it's just something I got to get through Mm -hmm. to be able to do it. So, you know, because I've I've um, counseled some people who have agreed to the polygamy, you know, agreed mm-hmm. to the polyamory relationships just for the sake of, well, I really feel like I really want to keep this person here. And in order mm-hmm. to keep them here, I have to agree to this. Yeah. It may hurt to walk away from that situation, but I pr- I guarantee you that's not the last person on life. You know, right. that's going to be, <laughs> just you know, the that you have, walk a, away. <laughs> just that walk you away. have the yeah. opportunity yeah. to establish right. something that you yeah. want, you know? So yeah. I, I think you just really being able to come to terms, is this something that I can live with for the rest of this relationship? Mm-hmm. And if it's not, just, you know, walk away from the situation. Yeah. Come to terms with, is this something that you want? And is something that you can talk through to come to a mutual, you know, um, agreement about what works? Mm-hmm. But if it isn't, 
It's okay to walk away. I'm a Taurus. Polyamory ain't for me, child. But it right. has nothing to do with the sign. I know, <laughs> but I'm just, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. You know, it's just not. Well, but a lot of women are have troubles with walking away. So I think like men and women, men and women. Yes, mm-hmm. men, thank you. So mm-hmm. men and women have issues with just walking away from the relationship. So I think that if anybody can take any of our listeners can take anything from this conversation, it yeah. would be to if something is not serving you, if you feel uncomfortable, if you're being, you know, undervalued um, or diminished in a relationship or you made to feel uncomfortable, just feel com- get the strength to walk away right. and i know that it's easier said, said than, than done, done for right. sure but you have to be able to also do the work on yourself and that's right. why i think talking to people like you you know mm-hmm. or other therapists or whomever mm-hmm. your network or your your support system of friends can help i say you definitely you. probably seek professionals okay mm-hmm. sometimes because sometimes we rely on our friends who might have limited knowledge about that's something true. and there's just judgment associated mm-hmm. with yeah it, right Mm-hmm. And so now you can't even be honest if you're feeling a certain way about certain right. things because yeah. now you're fearful of this. So true. Yeah. So but I think true. from a friend perspective, like they, the right friends, not all of your friends, mm-hmm. they do a really great job of uh, uplifting. If you. you have the right friends. If you have right. the right friends, if you have right. the right friend group. And I think when you're in a situation where you are in a toxic relationship and mm-hmm. you, you know, you do have low self-worth, I think that those really great friends can help build you up mm-hmm. to even to be able to go and seek the professional help right, that you yeah. may need, right? right? Mm-hmm. And so I think that's that's super important. But we want to thank you so much for oh coming gosh. to the podcast. We, there were so many gems nuggets. and golden nuggets yes. that were shared today. And I think that we definitely have to have a part two because I don't think that we scratched the surface of all the things that we wanted to talk about or we could have potentially talked about with you. So I know this was your first podcast. Yes, so we yes, broke yes, your yes, podcast. Yes, yes. Yay. <laughs> I enjoyed you it. Did you did great. So you did good. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. you can you here. tell um, our listeners where to follow you or where mm-hmm. to reach out? You can definitely reach me, uh, follow me on Instagram, Tamara Jones Impacts. You can find me on my website, Tamara Jones Impacts as well to find more about my services that I offer. But, you know, I do couples counseling. I do parent coaching. I do teen counseling. So all the things related to the family, healthy relationships, whether it's friendships, professionally or personally, all things relating to others, I, you know, serve in that capacity. Love it. And a quick question, because we do have a listening base that's Houston based, but also across the country. Do you offer virtual services or do you? I do offer virtual services. So I'm currently licensed in the state of Texas. So if you're anywhere in the state of Texas and open to virtual, you know, sessions, that's fine. But I also do coaching as well. You Mm -hmm. know, that allows me. We're not dealing with the trauma part. Mm -hmm. Right. But I'm giving you the skill building. So if you're outside of Texas and looking for these skills to how to build healthy relationships, we'll be able to do that. And just to give clarity, I didn't say walk away from situations when it's not right. Right. Mm -hmm. But put forth the effort to figure out how to work through them. Yes. And if there's no effort on the other the person right. and if all else fails then you walk away That's so right. i am not advocating just leave gotcha you know? gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> disclaimer we, disclaimer yeah. got you we so got you who like to be mad just be mad about what you do but not just right. all, you know? do, do the work right. do the work right yes, do the work mm-hmm. i agree and i will also say that you know for a person who has sought therapy like many times throughout mm-hmm. my life it's really hard to find a, a therapist that i can resonate with who i feel like will give me Same. the real the real deal and i think that that's what you offer as a therapist mm-hmm. and I yeah. think that you're authentic and I think that you will really be able to reach the source mm-hmm. of like whatever the issues are right. mm-hmm. and, and not just be textbook and I think that turns a lot of people I'm off not but textbook yeah. at, at all, all. she's not all. textbook <laughs> at all textbook and I appreciate that the way we threw out licking assholes yes, she, like, even she, didn't she was child. like she was I, like a and what <laughs> she heard it all she heard it all she's seen it all so again thank you guys for listening and for tuning in you can follow us on Instagram at Champagne Wives Podcast you can also watch our videos on YouTube at Champagne Wives Podcast Mm -hmm. If you go to YouTube, please hit the subscribe button and we will see you next week. Same time, same place. Cheers, ladies. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank y'all. Bye, y'all. Bye.